Gavin, welcome to my show. Nice to be here. Thank you. That we talk about what is the foundation of America first. And if you look back, Gavin, the foundation of America is pretty much built by entrepreneurs. Yeah, I think um, more all the modern countries, not just America. Yeah, but the other places they can take the credit that kings and queens were running. No, yeah, sure. The, the, lot of the, here like, we had nothing. We showed up here yeah. on the ship, some of us, and you and me both consider our... We came by planes very much later, but yeah. my you know, ancestors that came to Australia and did the same thing in New Zealand. And, but you're right, it's uh, by not having all those thousands of years of uh, infrastructure in front of you, you had to make it your own way. And I think that really... It's always a saying that I was always told, people get given things, you know, aren't as good as people who had to work for it. Yeah. Uh, those younger countries have had to work for it. And sure. Look at the power. Well, you are trained as a lawyer. Yeah, originally, yeah. So. And you pretty much reformed as yourself as a technocrat, mm. technologist, yeah. a geek, a futurist. Because if I look back your profile, in 1996, you joined Aristocrat. The company just went public like a couple of years before. So, yeah, so I was a, uh, a lawyer, grew up in Sydney, went to law school and, and did commerce law in Sydney at New South Wales University and then uh, started work. Uh, so I was at two firms. One was Daniel Madden Butler for six years and then I was went to a firm called Phillips Fox, which is now DLA Piper. And I did oh, wow. commercial, so transactional, tax trusts, that kind of stuff. And I uh, became a partner there and... Um, you know, I had no intention of leaving, to be honest with you, and I got my master's at Sydney, so I had all of that. And then one afternoon, I went to one evening, I went to a partners conference. We had about two hundred Australasian partners, and uh, my little group was doing okay, but the insurance litigators, which were sixty percent of the firm, were under pressure for costs, etc. And so I stood up. This way back in ninety eight. This is like ninety seven, ninety eight, yeah. And I, okay. I said. Uh, you know, perhaps you know, we're in the city and perhaps that with these big bulk litigation matters, we could save some money by doing the work outside of the city, like across the park, mm -hmm. save money, get the margins up, etc. For gaming, you have mm. completely changed the gaming. There are very few people, in my opinion, based on, I mean, I met a lot of you know, people in my life. There are very few people change the gaming. What was gaming 20 years ago, today is very different. But you saw the evolution of gaming, and I call it really experience, mm -hmm. because it's really about creating an experience for anyone. Sure, right. When I came here, uh, video was sort of like, you know, people wouldn't do penny slots. They didn't understand that, yeah. you know, multi-line penny slots, you know, some of the, the first guy, Warren Paddleford was his name, at Shumash Casino in California, he got it. He said, you're telling me I can do $10 bets on this machine, whereas... On the three real steppers, I can only do 75 cents for a dollar fifty or whatever. Yeah, more fun. I get it. I get it. <laughs> so, entrepreneurs yeah. are the core to America. If you look at today, what America is, Boeing's, Google, mm -hmm. these companies really, I'm not talking about only tech, even the manufacturing side, even the innovation side, what we have built is unbelievable. Look at the example of Tesla. Look at the work Elon Musk is doing. Even Larry Page, uh, for example, what he has done. So we go back to Silicon Valley. That's where I had spent more than 17 years of my life. What I learned is if you believe in yourself, if you truly, honestly solving a real problem, you will not have any problem making it real only in this country. I think that's really important what you said there is if you are creating a problem, if you are if you are solving a problem. Real problem. A real problem. Because a lot of people, you know, I, I don't know if now's a good time to talk about this, but I have i don't regard myself as an entrepreneur. I do regard you myself. You are. No, more okay, you are in a company, bigger company, but it's still you are an entrepreneur. But, it, but I sort of get it. And I, I, I sort, I, I've had this, call it luck or whatever, to understand what's going on elsewhere and bring it to the situation. Okay. And, you know, we saw, I guess, maybe 10 years ago, the 
the, the, the huge wave of startups. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone was leaving their corporate world and they were going to the Valley or New York or wherever. Starting to, something new. To start something new. Mm -hmm. And people, it took about five or six years and then people started realizing maybe one in 20 of these things were actually working. Mm -hmm. And that's because I thought only one in 20 of them were actually addressing a real issue. 19 out of 20 of them were either not addressing a properly a real issue or were not really addressing it or were addressing what was not a real issue. So uh, I kind of have a take on it, Gavin, because I have done a lot of, uh, not a lot, but I have done a few angel investing. Mm -hmm. And 10 of the companies are gone. I don't even know where the hell are. But uh, one of the companies, Lemonade Insurance, went public few, uh, oh. a few months ago. So, you know, we had a kind of jackpot. Yes, yep, yep. Uh, in Silicon Valley, as an investor, if you're a real investor, you know 90% of the deals are going to go south. Sure, that's the, the odds. Right. Now, it's like hedging your bet. Mm -hmm. But if you don't invest into 100 companies, yep, you, you don't, don't know which 10 will go. But if you're the person who can pick the one in 10? Exactly. Now, some uh, investors got lucky. They got 30 or 40%. Yeah. But I haven't seen any 90% success rate yet. But the beauty, Gavin, I find is it does not matter how many companies are really becoming successful. What I find matters is, especially in America, we reward failures. That's why we have a term called serial entrepreneurs. That's not about the people who are yeah. making multi-billion dollars. There is no doubt we do reward uh, failures. <laughs> right. If the guy failed, raised hundred million dollar, blew all that, Next morning, he can show up yeah. and he can raise a billion dollars. Nowhere else in the world, Gavin, we can do that. Nowhere. Yeah. If you fail once, you are out. In America, we know that this person has an understanding of how to build a company. It's an expensive experience. An experiment. I think people will understand what they've done better than elsewhere. Whereas if in, in the English system, which you and I both come from, whether yeah. you like it or not, um, your reputation uh, would not give you a second chance. Second chance. There's Very no second rare. chance. But in Very America, rare. we don't have that problem. And that, I believe, is one of the biggest That's, reasons great way thinking of it. America and American companies are still thriving because they have appetite for risk, they have appetite for doing research, they, yeah. they, they invest insane amount of money in building and experimenting new things because when we experiment, that one small idea can change the future of the company. Very good. I, I mean, I'm, it's, it's a very good way of looking at it. Uh, the other thing they have in America, which um, I guess the rest of the world has it, but not to the same extent, is a very inventive Wall Street financial financial background. Because, you know, I mean, where else in the world can some of the top biggest companies like never make a profit? Yeah, it's still um, a multi-trillion dollar company. So why people like you, I mean, I'm still not playing at that level, but why people like you not able to create, and the term I'm going to coin for our audiences Las Vegas Valley, when we can have Silicon Valley, which is a one hour flight, why can't we do it here? Yeah. It's, it's, what do you see is the problem? So, so Vegas historically, obvious, you know, 30 years ago, for the people who don't realize it, there was only one place to go gambling in the whole of the country legally, yeah. and that was Las Vegas. Las Vegas. And Las Vegas itself was, I think, incorporated in 1905 as a block of land. And mm -hmm. where we're actually sitting is not in Las Vegas, and the strip casinos that they all know is not in Las Vegas. Paradise. It's downtown. <laughs> and uh, so this was the road to LA and you know, the, we all know Bugsy Siegel and all those great stories. But you know, so Vegas up until... Bunch of renegades. Uh, yeah. Well, like, <laughs> and providing entertainment. Yeah. Right? Which is very much what we do. Yeah. And then um, New Jersey started 30 years ago and then obviously it's expanded with Native American Gaming Riverboat. Now it's in what, 42, 42 of the 50 states, there's casinos of some sort. So, but Vegas has maintained its position as like the corporate central headquarters for a lot of the casino groups. You know, Gaming the capital. Sea, yeah. And, and the big manufacturers as well. I mean, Cy Games, we moved them from New York to here. 
Um, ITT moved from Reno to here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, they're back in Rome. But aristocrat, although they're Australian, they built, they built a huge corporate complex here. Yeah, it's beautiful barn. Um, and all the other companies basically come here, and this is the place to be. Sure. Um, and we've always had that um, great camaraderie. You know, so over 2 million people live in Vegas now. Yeah. And yeah. so that's the way it's always worked. And people have cooperated, co-opetition. Yeah. Uh, you know, be it in the days of the intellectual property wars, if you want to call it like that. The um, where, So let's uh, talk a little bit about yeah. the stats. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, based on the research uh, my team has done, yeah. Las Vegas is close to 2 million people. Yeah. Silicon Valley is close to 3.5 million people. Las Vegas, we have only one university, UNLV. In Silicon Valley, we have multiple mm -hmm. and amazing, amazing institutions. Mm -hmm. UNLV has 23 to 25,000 students. Uh -huh. Out of that, not even 1,000 students in computer science program. In Silicon Valley, we have Stanford is almost enduring yeah. in medicine. Yes, pretty much. UC Berkeley is sure. half of that. Then you have UC Santa Cruz and yeah, no, no. hundred other places. Yes. And San Jose State is are doing phenomenal work. Mm -hmm. And I come from IIT Valley. We have twenty four thousand students now. In my time, it was like a few thousand only, but you know, the campus has grown. Five thousand, close to three to five thousand students, are enrolled in PhD program mm -hmm. in engineering. In Las Vegas, we have. Not even 1,000 kids in this engineering slash computer science department, and uh, they have great faculty. I'm sure you know uh, the team over there. The yeah. dean is yeah, Ram no, is doing a brilliant job. We've done a good job with them in engineering. We used to bring in uh, kids for internships and things like that. But keep going because I know you're going. Right. So now I was doing the analysis. I see, okay, 25,000 students only, and then. Out of that, only 1,000 foreign students. Yeah. Every single university yeah. is flooded with the students from all over the world. Sure. 30 to 40% uh -huh. of the students come from outside. You and me both know the challenges for us to create mm -hmm. Las Vegas Valley is talent. Yeah. Money, I don't believe that is a problem. We have $100 billion dollars every year is spent. So Las Vegas, average person out of two million people we are talking, cumulatively we spend hundred billion dollar a year. It's not a small money. It's not a pocket change. But we have only less than 1,000 students yeah. in computer science program. We get only 1,000 students from outside. Actually, even uh, from outside the state, less than 30%. Yeah. So we don't have talent, there is no way we can build Las Vegas Valley sure. without no, that, the yeah. talent. Money is not a problem, idea yeah. is not a problem, execution is not a problem, desire is not a problem. But until we get the top shelf talent, which we have to train, people are not going to come here from California. I don't believe, and I talk to, I'm on the board of three companies, the companies I've invested, I talk to them. And everybody said, oh yeah, you come to Vegas and I come there and I will save 30% or 40% of my cost. I say, yeah, yeah, let's do it. I'll give you space. I mean, we have a lot of space. And if I call you, I'm sure you can get me a lot more space for thousands of people, not hundreds. How will I find people? <laughs> How do I get? And I will, I will even extend it a little bit further. Yeah. I'm living in this country, yeah. uh, country for two decades. And I moved here two and a half, three years ago. I want to talk to somebody about data science and its application in health. I look for a person like that. I couldn't find any. I'm sure they are there. In Silicon Valley, I just go to the streets of Palo Alto in a cafe. Even the server knows a lot. Yeah. So what is really missing? Okay. I'm just throwing out okay, so let me, let me, observations. Let me start there with with your first observation about UNLV, et cetera, okay? So, you know, when I, when I went to university in Australia, we had five or whatever it was. And yeah. if, you went, if you got in, it was not a question of every kid goes to college. It was if you got the mark to get you into medicine or a combined law degree, that's at that institution, that's where you went. 
And so I went to the University of New South Wales, which was six miles from my home that way. Oh. And then I did my master's and it was at the University of Sydney, which was five miles from my home that way. So that's the way we did it. No one went overseas, no one traveled. We had 30% of our universities with foreign students. But the, and it's still that stage, but you know, in those days, if you got the mark, it was free to get in the university for a local, but oh. it was all paid for by the nationals. Yeah. Fast forward to America, you have two and a half thousand institutions yeah. of varying degrees, but yeah. a lot of them are very good. Yeah. Every kid thinks it's their entitlement to go to college. Mm -hmm. um, which is a problem, I agree. Which is the problem in its first place. And of course, if they can they afford it. They are entitled, it, but they have to do something. To yeah, be well, you, then, then you categorize it into a couple of different groups. You've got those who want to go to college because their friends do, and you know, their marks aren't that good, so they can go to a local state school for a lot cheaper. Uh, but then there's the wealthier ones who want to go to, in this instance, Arizona State to party with their friends and have 70,000 people and oh, no cheaper. disrespect or whatever it may be. But, you know, so I have kids who grew up here. And we'll come back to that because it's a good example. Um, to go to UNLV as a local, it's not difficult to get a full ride scholarship if you are reasonably intelligent and diligent in your studies. But if you are at that level, you are more likely to want to go outside of the state. Yeah. Now, UNLV have done a really good job building a great hospitality. Um, great program. Right, great program. And they attract a lot of international people, mm -hmm. a lot of interstate people, I should say. Yeah. Uh, their law program is is rising rapidly as they are in medicine. They're trying, right? They're doing all those right I things. They do a pretty good job in medicine. But, I mean, I'll give them a lot of credit. But, you know, the biggest problem I found as an employer, we had a, when I ran side games, we were working with the government on this, is that um, the idea of having Las Vegas as an incubator, I mean, you're across the road from California. Yeah. Your taxes, are, local state taxes are zero compared to California, which are ridiculous. Yeah. Um, you know, this is a state that, whilst it's democratic, it's pretty liberal and conservative. It, it's not really like California, which is very democratic. It's, yeah. it's pretty much neutral. It's a balanced system. It's a balanced system. And that's state. how I so, call it. And, you know, it's, and it's, and it's a very entrepreneur-friendly. Very entrepreneur-friendly. The biggest problem, I believe, starts with the fact that we rank either 48th or 49th out of 50 when it comes to public education for our school kids. Our matriculation rates are in the bottom two of the, of the country. And so when we were trying to recruit, you know, it's one thing to get engineers to come to college and come graduate out of college, but to try and recruit a young engineer manager, um, you can bring them to Vegas and lifestyle, expense, tax, tick, 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 yeah. every, every box. What about my kids going to school? You know, the best schools... There's only a couple of private schools. There's like 70 kids in each class. Very difficult to get in. The public schools, 1,200 kids in the class. Uh, it's a problem. That's a huge it is a problem. huge problem. So you've got that problem. Then you've got the university problem, which would, you know, ultimately, if you have a good program um, and you have some good locals coming in, it'll build itself. But right now, you know, if I'm an engineer, if I want to be an engineer, um, I look at the like I do with my kids, you look at the top 10 schools for this, you know, UNLV isn't going to be there. Um, and a lot of good kids from this school go to the UNR, the sister school up in Reno. Yeah. So. How do we create? Because I have a deep desire to do it. Three yeah. years ago, we came here, we started our office uh, one and a half year ago, and I was very excited to get some talent. We can't find talent. Yeah. That's Even in the COVID time, we couldn't find it. And I'm not talking about really the data science guy. I'm talking about basic engineering talent. I did the math uh, based on the data I got. There are less than 16,000 people in the software industry in the whole Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Three and a half million people create multi-trillion dollar economy for the whole nation. Sure. So the math is not adding up. Well, you know, the other problem As is third person, right? You know yeah. what I mean? I, I get it. Um, but it's also Silicon Valley is very unique, using extreme. Yeah. You but know? okay, like, okay, it should be 10% at least. Yeah, well, let's look at Austin, right? So, yeah. So when we had, when I was at Psy Games, we set up, because of the, the, the dearth of good technical support here, we would set up centers like we had India, we had China, we yeah. had Australia, we had, uh, in this country, we had Cedar Falls, Iowa, we had. That's not um, a bad place, actually. It's fantastic. Um, 
Arizona, we set up in Tucson one time to pull out of that university because we couldn't get it here. Yeah. That didn't work so much because you've also got to have the gaming yeah, environment. Yeah. For you, it's very unique. Uh, yeah, that. but we, we, we did Austin, and Austin was, when I first went to Austin, I mean, oh, unbelievable place. I love it. The food is good. Oh, everything's good. And uh, the college is good, the whole thing. And, um, and you did a great job. But you start a, a software center there with a manager who you steal from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And all they do is steal their old workmates. Oh, okay. And so all you're doing is you're working 10% to move here and then they all move for 10% more here or 10% more here. Uh, so all you're doing so is- So too much integration. It's becoming- You never build a team now. You're not building a team, but it's also money-based. It's people yeah. jumping around. That's not really the answer either. No, you can't build a company. In yeah. this town, you aren't getting a lot of people because we have non-competes. Uh, unlike California, we actually enforce them uh, because in gaming, you know, if, if I've got someone developing my software at Scientific Games, I don't want them going to go to IGT, of course. Yeah. And copy the same. Item. Exactly. Yeah. So you've got little things like that. But at the end of the day, it's just that you're not getting that level of... First of all, this is, I don't think it's as... Outside of uh, America, there's a stigma attached to being in the gaming world. True. Uh, that's beginning to change with online gaming and sports, particularly in America. Now everyone wants a job at DraftKings, wants a job at FanDuel, wants a job at Bet. You know, yeah, even esports has uh, brought a lot of. Yeah. See, it's a form of entertainment. Yeah. Right? Whatever we call it, you know, the, yeah. there is a lot of industry. It's, there is a lot of software. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But when it comes to technology, is a technology, and I do see that a lot of phenomenal things come out of the technology we develop for gaming. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like well, the kind of performance we need in the gaming space is very different and creates very interesting paradigm for the developers and even data scientists. Yeah. Let's come back to a yeah. question and I want to uh, close the session in a few minutes. Yes. What message do you have for our audience? But you know, you've got to, you've got to make, it starts with education, in my opinion. The, the, the one thing that this city needs to do more than anything else at all levels, be it tertiary, be it primary, be it everything, we have to improve. I, I was listening to the news last night, there was some seven or eight hour meeting about, uh, I think it was about uh, racial injustice or something was the discussion. And they threw in there at the end, which they parked off, and a thousand temporary student uh, teachers to help the, the overcrowding of classes. Well, maybe that should have been first and addressed rather than all the other issues, which will always be addressed because yeah. it's a society. So, you know, those things, teachers, education, then, you know, some, I think once it becomes, I mean, unfortunately, we've developed these models here where we do a lot of our development outside of town. If we could somehow all get together and make this the software center for the gaming world or something like that and invest in the university, and maybe that might help, but I think it starts at education, 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 and one other thing, water. So the big message I would like to share with our audience is there are phenomenal opportunities in Las Vegas. Yes. Gavin believes in that, and I bet he's going to fund some of those companies if you come up. The challenge is we don't have the talent. And the question is for all of us who care, we need to find ways to work together to solve that problem. Why don't we do that? <laughs> okay, let's give it a shot. I want to thank you for your time, Gavin. It was so, so really nice thank you. to have you. Uh, I, and thank you very much to all of our audience. Because of you, I have this show. And uh, if you want to follow Gavin Isaac, you can look him up on Google. Uh, you will find tons of information about him. Thank you very much. Energy for